Welcome back to JR Pro Shop Vids, everyone. We have a very special guest, Mark Bufa, the master of fit. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so fit, we're talking about how your hand fits inside the bowling ball. Uh, Mark, can you tell us a little bit more of what makes a good fit? A good fit is very subjective, right? So in essence, what you want with a good fit is you want the ball to be able to I guess hug your hand as best as possible with the least amount of effort and obviously without you know gushing blood at the end of a two game block right so you need to have some sort of you know longevity with your with your with your hand as well as you're progressing through a tournament if you're going to be having pain or if it causes some 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 issues with your hands, then obviously you might not bowl very good. So in essence, basically, the quick definition of a good fit is that it is something that is comfortable, and more at the elite level is that it is comfortable and that also you can do different things with your hand. So if you want to catch a little bit more, play with your speed, uh, change axis rotations and stuff like that, if your grip doesn't enable you to do that, then you might be a little bit handcuffed there. And that's where, you know, working with your local Ipsia certified pro shop is uh, gonna help you with that. So with that being said, if you got blisters or you're bleeding after a tournament, you better go get that checked. Right, right definitely, that's square one. If you have injuries or usual wear spots that are very excessive, there are some wear spots that are somewhat normal. So some normal places where you'll have callus. The way that I like to explain it is that if you play guitar, you're gonna have callus on the end of your fingers. If you go to the gym, you're gonna have callus inside your hands. There's some things that are normal with bowling callus. There are some things that are abnormal. Some of the normal calluses that you will find on your hand will be the usual wear spot so you might get a little bit more callus on the inside of your fingers okay uh, if you have bruising on the back of your nails that is a usual sign that you have probably too long of a span or not excessive reverse pitch some bad signs when it comes to your fingers on the thumb a usual wear spot will be on the inside of your thumb that's going to be a spot where you're going to want to have some callus and that will build up. You'll also get some callus here at the at the base. However, it shouldn't be like a bulging, you know, <laughs> disc of, uh, of callus. OK, so like this could be also problematic, but you will have some sort of hard skin here at the base of your thumb since that will be touching it. Typically, if you wear or if you tear on the outside of your thumb over here, that's usually a problem. OK, so that could be. A whole shape more than anything you know the the you know the importance of doing a properly cut oval or trapezoidal thumb yeah. so typically that would be the case it would be either a badly shaped thumb hole or also pitch and span obviously those are the first things to check okay so those are some of the quick bird's eye view things to look into when you're looking just at your hand so now that we know that if you're bleeding or you got excessive calluses or you need skin patch all the time uh, you got to go check your fit so mark what are the most important aspects of a good fit so there's a couple of factors. Uh, one of the first things that you need to look at or a pro shop operator needs to consider is span. Okay, a lot of times we'll get people that come in and they'll say, hey, I need to change my pitches. But before you change pitches, you need to make sure that the span is correct. So what I like to call it is a base fit. Okay, so by using your fitting tools, like your fitting rings and those types of things. We had a fitting ring here and it disappeared. Here it is. Ha -ha. Okay, <laughs> so either using some sort of fitting tool. This is one of many that are available on the market. So your pro shop operator should have a preferred tool. Okay, this is the preferred tool here, which is totally fine. By checking your span, Band, that's going to be the first step okay after that span and pitch work hand in hand okay so you can't guesstimate your pitches without having a yeah. proper span okay so first things first check your span then the pitches will come and then lastly the thumb hole size but also more importantly the shape okay so you might have had some people that come in with a round thumb hole and all of a sudden you fit them with a properly fitted oval with the right degree maybe do some half back cuts make it a little bit fancy do some tapering and yeah. they it's 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 like their mind is blown because it fits so great okay so those are some of the things to consider first the span then it's pitches then it's whole shape those would be the three aspects of importance when looking at a, at a fit just not even a good fit just a fit so most important thing is the span, first and foremost. Is there a way we can check that at home, Mark? Yeah, definitely. This is something that you could check at home. Obviously, the best resource would be to check with your local pro shop operator, but this is something that you can check, okay? Why don't we do it together right now? So first things first is 
you want to take your thumb and you want to put it inside the bowling ball, okay? One thing that you want to look for is that the that thumb goes all the way into the base, okay? So what you'll see sometimes is that bowlers won't be able to get it deep enough, okay? And basically what happens is it makes the thumb stick out a little bit, making the span a little bit too long. So once this is seated, we just want to lay the ball right on top, okay? And what we're looking for here is that the crease of the finger be at least at the midpoint of the insert. That would be the longest span permissible. I like seeing it in the top third of the hole. That gives you enough room to play with your grip pressure if your hand swells and stuff like that. So that's one thing that you can do looking at home for that. Next thing you want to check also, so we check to see if the span is good. We got a check mark there. Now we need to see if the finger inserts fit properly. Okay, so now take out your thumb and basically one finger at a time, put your finger in and it should be able to go with a little bit of wiggle into the first joint, okay? Now same thing with the other finger and we're good to go, okay? And then lastly, what you wanna do is you wanna pick up the bowling ball and you wanna put it in your hand as if you were, one, as if you were going to bowl. So they go into the first joint and we put the thumb in, okay? So we wanna see that the thumb goes into the base the same way that it went in when we had no fingers. And we wanna see in the back here to make sure that the fingers aren't popping out of the holes, okay? So that's what you're gonna look for. So number one, does the thumb get seated all the way to the base? Number two, where does the crease fall on top of the finger inserts? Three, do your fingers fit in the inserts properly? And then four, with your whole hand in it, is anything popping out? kind of looking a little bit funny. So those would be some of the things there. And just looking right now at you, I might want to check a thing or two. Okay. <laughs> All right, now that we've figured out the proper span and the tightness of the finger grips, let's figure out the tightness of the thumb hole and how tight it should be. Right, so this is one thing also, uh, if you are an, an IPSIA certified technician, I also suggest that you take some sort of coaching course, okay? I'm guessing most of your subscribers are Americans, so definitely check out the USBC bronze course, or if you're here in Canada, reach out to your CTF uh, local administrator to see if there's a coaching course that you could take there. So this is also in regards to coaching, because if you are squeezing the ball too hard, you're not able to have a free-flowing swing, okay? So the best way to do it is, is to think, if you are drinking out of a cup, you're not squeezing the cup to change the shape, you're just holding it enough so it doesn't slip out of your hand same thing with the bowling ball what we want to do here is we're gonna put the ball into the hand and we're gonna leave the hand open okay so what we're looking for here is the ball is just gonna hang we give a little bit of a tug here and it falls right off okay so as we see that thumb hole was really snug so that's a good thing but what we have seen and yesterday during the clinics is that when people do this on the side the ball just falls straight to the ground okay which is a big problem okay so if you can't if the ball's not hanging onto your hand we have an issue because in the end what it should be is that you should be able to just do a yo-yo motion and the ball should just be able to be flinged off your hand just like that okay so we want the ball to hang onto the hand a little bit but also we don't want you to to have to death grip it to hang on to it all right yes sir good okay so we're about halfway through the vid here with mark we want to know when's the last time you got your hand measured when's the last time you got refit for your bowling ball let us know down in the comments below all right, so a couple months ago, Mark texted me and asked me to change my fit a little bit. He noticed some things in my YouTube videos, and maybe you can explain what you saw and what I changed and how that has helped me uh, release it a little bit more consistently with a little bit more rev rate. Right, so while watching some of the videos, I kind of noticed that sometimes you were like, it was getting out of your hand like a little bit quick. Also, I just felt like everything was coming out at the same time. Like you've always had a super tight thumb hole, but before you didn't use grips, right? And yes. I don't think you used a lot of rosin either, because if you don't use grips, you need to use rosin to hang on to it. So it's like everything's kind of coming out at the same time. Now you are a high ref player, but I was like, have you ever tried anything different? And I've known you for a long time, and it just didn't seem like you were maybe experimenting as much as you should being a pro shop operator, right? You have access to all this equipment. So basically my only thing to you is have you ever tried like anything? And at the time you had doing, you were doing the videos with Mitch. Yeah. You know, Mitch is one that's, you know, really high rev rate on tour, Mitch Upe. So talking with him as well, you were talking about the vacuum inserts and how basically everyone on tour now drills that way. Yeah to create expansion in the inserts and more comfort and also more of a delayed you know, yeah. exit. So more of a delay between the thumb exit and the finger exit to just, like you said, generate a little bit more rev rate. So I said, why not try it? And actually after we shoot this video, maybe we'll try a couple of different things too, right? Might as well. 
So my suggestion to you and also to all your viewers is if you have the, had the same fit for a long time, that's fine. But unfortunately, we all age, okay? And when we all age, unfortunately, things happen to our bodies. We lose weight, we put on weight, we, we lose flexibility, arthritis, all this type of stuff. So make sure to check your fit with your pro shop professional at least once every 18 months or so, okay? Just to get, you know, you go to the dentist every year, yeah. hopefully, hopefully, right? Just I a don't checkup. Judge. Yeah. But that's it, so just do a checkup. You need to change your grips at least twice or thrice a year. So why not do a grip, cha a grip check at least every so often, okay? The other thing too, if ever you travel and you go to like, let's say the USBC Open Championships or you come here to see the JR Pro Shop guys and you think that that pro shop is a reputable shop, ask them for their opinion on your fit. A good pro shop operator won't say that your fit is garbage. They will just say, this is my opinion on your fit. If you want to try it, we will do it. Okay. And it is a constantly evolving process. So I, I invite you all to challenge the status quo and try stuff because you will also try to build your own fit. So having said that, all we did through our text messages was, hey, have you tried this? Have you tried that? I kind of gave you some suggestions, but I didn't tell you exactly what to do. So I'm, I'm actually curious, what, what did you do? I drilled like about six different pitches and spans. Uh, everything was a little bit longer in the span to help me hold onto the ball a little bit longer. And in doing so, I had to go a little bit more reverse in the fingers as I was feeling it catching my nail. So I went a little longer in the span, a quarter of an inch. It's quite a bit actually. And a little bit more reverse in the fingers. I'm three eighths away in the middle and an inch away in the ring now. And also a little bit more forward in the thumb to help me hold on to it and release a little bit later as well. So after the six bowling balls I drilled, this is the one I settled on. And those are the changes I made. The yeah. first pitch there with one inch, that's, that's a lot. Yeah. Okay. Well, my finger doesn't bend. Yeah, there you go, good. Yeah. Yeah. See? Not everyone has the luxury of drilling a bunch of different balls with a bunch of different fits just to test it out. Mark, what's the best way someone can try a few different fits and not throw away six bowling balls? Have a good relationship with your pro shop operator. If you're bowling once or twice a league, uh, a week a league, you're probably going in and like I said, freshening up your surfaces, changing your grips, that type of stuff. If you're loyal to your pro shop, they will be receptive to improving your game. That's what they're there for. They're the local pros. They're there to help you. Don't hesitate to ask the questions and they are your resource, okay? Also, with today's day and age, doing FaceTime calls or things of that nature, it makes it a little bit easier. It is somewhat difficult still to do that remotely, but yeah. we can try to diagnose. So you're watching this channel because it is a topic that interests you. Write, out, write down in the questions or comments down below if ever you had anything that you would like to ask Jordan, Barker, or even myself for our opinion from a distance. Okay? But like I said earlier, if ever you go to some of these national events, yeah. the people working those booths are, you know, the cream of the crop. So don't hesitate to ask questions. And honestly, when you're bringing that question and saying, hey, I would just like your input on it, yeah. it's not negative in any way, right? All you're looking for is feedback from outside, just as if you would if you're bowling a clinic or working with a different coach. That's how you have to take it with, with this, with the Pro Shock Technician. Just to build on that, so say we do change the fit a little bit, how many games or how many shots do you think is acceptable in order to say, yes, I like it, or no, I don't like it? Right, we'll see that quite a bit as well, where people will basically make like a, a huge deal out of, oh, the first shot didn't feel so good. Yeah. Again, if you use that example of being coached out on the lanes, the first time you try something different with your coach, it feels weird the first couple of times. Same thing with the fit. So I would say try it on like a Swiss cheese ball. So like take something that you've plugged up a bunch of times, try a different fit on it. and don't try it in league mostly but also in practice and just get a feel for it and try different things move around the lane a little bit hook a little bit go a little bit straighter with it if that's something that's in your skill set and give it a couple of games at least okay don't take three shots and say it's garbage kind of give it some time to sink in and also with that you want to see how your calluses and how your hands going to respond to some of the yeah. changes because there's going to be some new rub spots so by only bowling four shots with it, you're not going to feel that, right? So that's where you might want to bowl maybe even like a full league session with a different fit after having said, okay, I'll give this a shot. Yeah. And then seeing how it responds to your hand. And then obviously the big test is to try it in tournament play. All right. So we talked a lot about fit and what the proper fit is generally the span, the snugness of the holes and stuff like that. But is there some way we could adjust the span and the finger pitches and stuff to create different ball roll? Help us create like extra loft or something like that on the lanes? Right, so what we talked about was what I call the base fit. 
Okay, so in order to make changes afterwards, like you're mentioning, you need to have a good starting point. Yeah. So first you go to driving school, you learn how to drive, do it slow, and then you that's when you learn how to really start racing or whatever, right? So what we need to have is a good base fit. When we, once we have a good base fit, yes, we can start moving things around to create something different. So either more axis rotation, more axis tilt, more rev rate, quicker release, so on and so forth. There's so many different things that we can touch on. However, you have to wear a different hat. Okay, either you put on the coaching hat or you put on the pro shop technician hat because I feel that some of the changes that you will make with the fit, like if you make, let's say, a change to increase rev rate, you're not going to increase rev rate 150%, right? <laughs> it might increase a little bit, yeah. but that's where maybe coaching would be a little bit more of, of a fix, okay? So you always have to take it with a grain of salt, okay? The, the grip is not the fix-all, whereas coaching is always you know an integral part of that as well so the base fit with a you know with a, a fit that you can also play with afterwards to make some changes a performance fit is an asset i feel like it works very well with coaching so check with your coach check with your local local pro shop tech but yes we can make some changes but first off you need a proper base fit without a proper base fit you can't do nothing so as we had mentioned, we have a good base fit. We've tried some different things. Like you had said, you're trying six different grips. Yeah. I hope you documented them, documented them all because if ever you wanted to go back and try something, at least you have that on file. And that's where it's very important for your pro shop operator to either use a handwritten spec sheet or use a piece of software like Spectre where you can track the history of all the spec sheets that you've done to make those changes as you progress through your career. One of the things also, if you're gonna be trying different fits, just make sure they're documented. All right, we talked a lot about the one-handed fit and the span between the fingers and thumb and how your hand's supposed to fit in the ball if you're using your thumb. But what about two-handed fit, Mark? Is that a little bit more simple? It seems like it. It seems like it would be a little bit more simple, but same thing, right? So you're looking at how the ball is released. Is it like a little bit too harsh off the spot? Do you want it to be a little bit smoother out onto the lane when they do the release? This is where you can play mostly with the forward and reverse pitches in the fingers, okay? Also for comfort. So uh, what you'll also see is a lot of the two-handers will tend to bury their fingers a little bit too deep. And if that creates a lot of discomfort in the middle of the finger, that's where you might want to change some pitches and maybe even some grip types. Maybe try different brands because different brands have different hardnesses and see what's comfortable for, for your player. One of the most important things, and uh, Cal Troop does this really well, where the two-handers need to make sure that they always put the hand in the same spot. Okay, so if you're taking the ball and one time you're holding it like this and another time like this, just make sure you're well disciplined and always putting it in the same spot. Uh, I know that today you have to put like an X in the middle of the grip so you know where it is. So maybe if you're you know a little bit more anal about it, always put it in a certain spot and take your time just to put your hand on the ball the same way so at least the layout's the same every time, right? Yeah. I guess that's the only thing I could say uh, for the two-handed play. Uh, so what is your opinion on how far to go in with the fingers for a two-hander? I see lots of different things. I see guys going in like almost like a conventional grip to the second joint and also just like a regular fingertip grip to the first joint. Right, so let's let's bring it back to basics here. So if you have like a youth player or someone that's just starting out playing, playing two-handed, we start with the basic principle of fingertip, which would be to the first joint, okay? If they feel like it's not catching enough, then we make the progression to using vacuum. If that still isn't enough and they feel like they still need to bury them, fine, then we do that, maybe make some changes to, to the pitches. And then going down up to conventional, well, then that's fine. It becomes more personal preference, okay? Now, if you're using the PBA Tour as an example, these guys are the best of the best. They've yeah. pretty much tried everything under the sun, and that's fine. Now, is that good for you at home? Maybe it is, but I guess don't base it off of what they're doing. Really base it off of your game and use your resources that are there locally, your certified coaches and your certified pro shop technicians to help you make those, those calls. But going back to what we said at the first minute, if your hand is bloody and, and you can't bowl three games, then there's probably something wrong with your fit, right? <laughs> we want some longevity out of the hand to be, to be able to perform at the, best, at the highest level for the longest time. Thanks for all your expertise, Mark. Bowling fit guru here. <laughs> He's gonna help me with my fit a little bit later, maybe make a couple tweaks, we'll see. Thanks for all the members who've joined so far. If you like a few tips, a little bit of coaching, a little bit of Arsenal advice, make sure you hit that join button below.
Thanks again, Mark, for all your expertise. Yeah, thanks to you guys here at JR Pro Shop. Everyone back home, make sure to comment, subscribe, like this video, please. And also don't forget, head over to bufabowling.com and use the coupon code JUNGLEBARKS to get 10% off your order. And maybe I'll even pack the box. <laughs> yeah, how about that? <laughs> thanks, everyone. Cheers. See you in the next video.